today I'll be taking you through SOAR profile. As we already learned in standard 5, SOAR is the top layer of the earth's surface. So today I'll be taking you through the profile of the SOAR. So SOAR profile is the vertical arrangement of soil layers as you dig down the ground. So you have to understand that Different farmers, they don't just plow their crops. Trees don't just grow at that place. It depends on the profile of that soil. So when you talk about soil profile, we are talking about the arrangement of the layers. So when you dig down, you can see that there are different colors of soil. So that's the profile of the soil. So I'll take you through the sketch of the layers of the soil profile. So bear in mind that soil profile differs place to place. You can't expect the profile of the soil in Khaburoni to be the same as the profile of the soil in Mamu. So it differs country to country, place to place. That's why some of the plants grow in certain countries and can't grow in another country. So it shows you that it depends on the profile of the soil for those trees to grow. So I'll take you through the sketch of the layers of the soil profile. So we have four layers of the soil profile. And they have the other name. We can also call them the horizon. So when you dig down the ground, you will see different layers like this with different colors. So the first layer you will see, we call it the top soil. That's the first layer. The second layer is called the subsoil. The next layer is called the partly weathered rock. And then the last layer, the fourth layer, we call it the parent rock or the bed rock is the foundation. So like I stated that there are other names for these layers. Top soil can also be called horizon A. So usually students get this question wrong. It will come and ask you, mm, what is the first or it, what is the characteristics of horizon A? Usually they will mix the horizon and the other name. So my advice is listen to what the question is saying. If it's saying horizon, make sure you state that horizon. If it said the layer, make sure you state the top soil. So subsoil is also called horizon B. Partly weathered rock is also called horizon C. Bed rock or parent rock is also called horizon D. I hope you can all see this case because in our next session we'll be doing the characteristics of these layers. So we'll be explaining the characteristics of the layers of the soil profile. We'll start with the top soil, which is also known as horizon A. So top soil is dark in color. As we can see from this diagram, the sketch, top soil is dark in color. This darkness in color shows that top soil has a lot of humus. When you talk about humus, we mean it has a lot of nutrients. The next characteristic, top soil is more fertile. Just like I stated, it is dark in color, which means it does what? It has a lot of humus. Another one, it has good aeration. When you say it has good aeration, we mean air is able to move through it. Again, it has good root penetration. That's why plants are able to grow in this layer. It's because roots are able to penetrate easily in this layer. As you can see from this diagram, plant roots are able to penetrate through this layer. The next characteristic is good water retention. It is able to allow water to pass through it. That's why plants are able to grow in it. As you all know, plants need water in order to survive. The next one, it is good for plant growth. Most of our crops, they grow because of topsoil. So topsoil allows plant growth. Let's move on to the 
the next layer. We have subsoil. Subsoil is the second layer after top soil. Subsoil is light in color. As compared to top soil, subsoil is lighter in color. This means that subsoil has less humus. When you say humus, just like I stated, it means subsoil has less nutrients. And if it has less nutrients, it means that some crops may grow in it. Others won't be able to grow in subsoil because it has what? Little humus. So when you see in an exam stating about humus, don't be surprised. What does humus mean? Humus means nutrients. The next one, it is more compact. As compared to topsoil, subsoil is compact, which means that root penetration, water retention, and aeration is not as good as topsoil. Partly weathered rock, which is also known as horizon sea. Partly weathered rock is a mixture of gravel and broken down of rocks. As you can see from our sketch, these are broken parts of partly weathered rock. Partly weathered rock is not good for plant growth. I hope we all know that we can plant our crops in rocks. The next one, it has no humus. I'm sure we all know that rocks don't have nutrients. The next one, plant roots do not move in it easily. Plant roots cannot move in this part because of this one, these rocks. Let's go on to the last layer, known as bedrock or parent rock. That is horizon D. Solid rock. So parent rock is the foundation. It is, a, it is made up of a solid rock. As, as you can see, this big rock. This is parent rock or bed rock. The next one, plants cannot grow in it. This is the last layer when you dig down. And usually we find this layer when you are digging bow holes. You can't just find this layer when you are just planting. So you find it when you are doing, when you are digging bow holes. So this layer, plants cannot grow in it. Roots can or cannot pass through this layer. The last point, underground water is sometimes found on top of this layer. So there are situations where you can just find water in this layer, on top of this rock. That's all about the layers. So another thing is, why is it important to know the profile of the soil? Why should we care much about the profile of the soil? Well, as a farmer, you have to know which soil or which layer is good for your plant to grow. So it is good to know the profile of the soil so that you will know the purpose of that land. Imagine you have a big space, a farm, and only to find out that the soil in that farm is not that fertile. Then it's good for you to know so that you can know which purpose to use that land for. So it is good to know the profile of the soil for reason like plant growth. So I hope you all understood what soil profile is. With the knowledge that we have, I would love us to try this exercise. The first question says, define soil profile. What it means is that you have to explain what soil profile is. And usually I advise students to look at the marks. We all know that our agriculture paper is structured. So for you to get these two marks, you have to, there are certain ways that we expect from you as a student. So define soil profile. Tell us what you understood about soil profile. The second one say draw a typical soil profile and label its layers. This five marks, it comes from the four layers that you are going to list your stage and the diagram. Your diagram should be well labeled. The third one, which horizon is good for plant growth? It didn't say which layer, it said which horizon. 
So this is the main way we should look at. Which horizon is good for plant growth? The fourth one, state two characteristics of subsoil. What did you understand about subsoil? What is different? What makes subsoil different from other layers? The next one, give any two reasons why we should know the profile of the soil. Like I told you, as a farmer, you should know the profile of your soil. So I want you to state.